Tony Ruggiero with Stan Efforting, IFBB Pro, and soon to be, I got a feeling, the uh, world's strongest bodybuilder coming up. Thought I already was. You thought you already <laughs> were, huh? Yeah. Building a lot of hype for this season. Yeah. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of it on the radio shows and in the magazines yeah. now. Little trash talking going yeah, on. Just a little. Have you talked to Johnny at all about any of this? You guys uh, cool? You, you or know, are you just playing? We playing don't talk with it? a lot. We're, we're, we're competitors. So, you know, powerlifters tend to be a. Uh, you know, they're pretty be a competitive sort, particularly about those numbers. So, uh, I think we'll do our talking on stage at the Olympia. I think you will. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you. I say it's been a whirlwind couple years for you. I mean, this Emerald Cup comeback. I mean, you don't even know who I am, but I remember you from the '80s, Stan, yeah. the robot Stan. <laughs> I remember the old routines, flat top. Can I we mean, cut I've that out. We cut that out. I've been right? around a while. <laughs> So, uh, anyways, I mean, you disappeared for a long time. Yeah, ten you, years. Ten yeah. years, yeah. didn't compete, mm -mm. and then you got the bug again. What what gave you that drive again? Uh, you know, I was working. Uh, I took ten years off. I was just working. I got too busy and traveling around to make the commitment I wanted to to bodybuilding. Um, and uh, you know, when work got slow, and when I was in a better position, um, I decided I was going to give it a give it a whirl. The Emerald Cup has always been. You know the pinnacle of bodybuilding for the Northwest for what Absolutely. 25 plus years now. It's uh, everybody's always wanted to. If you it's got like that, a, a pro card around here, around it's like here the Mr. that's Olympia. Yeah, <laughs> around here that's a big deal, and uh, getting that sword was always a big deal. And uh, so I wanted to chase that. So in '06 I went up there and and um, won the uh, super heavyweight class, and uh, I didn't win the overall. I was happy with that, and I didn't compete again for two more years till '08. And, and then uh, you brought in a package that blew my yeah, mind. I was you know, like, that conditioning. Can you bring that to a pro stage? I know you just did the Phoenix, and I didn't see that conditioning. I know. How yeah. hard is it to duplicate your condition as a pro? Well, here's what I did. Uh, at the Emerald Cup, I died it all the way down to 225. And uh, I did that because uh, the Emerald Cup judges, particularly for the overall, they want to see that extra level of, of, of conditioning, those cross striated glutes. If you don't have those, you're not winning the overall at the cup. And that was kind of always the, the benchmark. So I died it all the way down to 225, which at my height was, was too lean, but I was, I was shredded. So I won the overall there. Uh, and then went and trained with Flex Wheeler to get ready for the Masters Nationals in 09. How'd you hook and, up with Flex? You know, I went down uh, with a partner of mine, um, Keith Williams out of Minnesota. He had won the Mr. Minnesota, which was Flex's show. Oh, that's right. So we went down to LA and met him in Venice and uh, did a workout with Flex down there, mostly for Keith to get him ready for the USAs. And uh, Flex was prodding me to do the uh, Masters Nationals. And if Flex tells you to do the Masters Nationals, you do, you do the Masters Nationals. You know, it's Flex Wheeler. So you just do what he says. So th that's how I prepped for that show. And what we did this time is, is he increased my calories frequency and total quantity of food. So when I went into Masters Nationals, I replicated that conditioning. I was dialed in, I was shredded. Uh, I was, uh, weighed in at uh, 259 at that show. And then um, uh, when I went to do the Phoenix Pro, and then the off season, I power lifted again. Shortly after, you went, you did yeah. that raw powerlifting meet? Probably six, seven weeks afterwards. Six or seven, wow, is that's when I put a up short that, time that raw, to, the big to raw go total. right to powerlifting yeah. from bodybuilding. Yeah, it, I took a lot of strain for that. I had tendonitis in the elbows, and my whole body was sore as a result of that. You just, I realized that would take a little longer to transition. Right. Bodybuilding, I can go right back into it. Within four sure, or five weeks, I sure. can diet for a show. It takes a good eight weeks to recover uh, from bodybuilding kind of diet to get back into powerlifting. Uh, my big mistake was, was at the Phoenix is uh, I tried to carry a little too much weight and I tried to drop water too fast. I was 272 the day before the show and uh, I was hard. I, I put up some pictures. Uh, I think they, they ended up on uh, MD.com actually. Some photos of me from uh, five days out and I was lean and I was tight and I was, I was ready to go. Uh, the night before um, I fiddled with my water in a, in a manner in which I hadn't done before. I lost 13 pounds overnight. Wow. And uh, so I, I had deflated, skin had pulled away from the muscle. I, I wasn't showing the kind of conditioning. So uh, I'm going to get ready for the Europa. It's in three weeks. Uh, Europa in Orlando. And uh, in that show, I, I won't make the same mistake. I'll transition my water more slowly. Sodium load, sodium deplete. Uh, water to water deplete. Uh, carb deplete, carb load. So I'll, I'll do, you know, the typical stuff mm -hmm. that, that people do that's always worked in the past for me and see if I can bring a better conditioning into the Orlando. What, what was that experience like being, I mean, you hear you were an amateur a year ago, Masters, yeah. Nationals, then you're standing on a pro stage, which, yeah. and I read, it's a funny thing, because you said, 
Aaron Madrin kind of when you saw how good he was, he kind of you kind of gave up and said, you know, yeah. I'm I'm done with this. You know, this guy's crazy, and now here you are an IFBB pro. Aaron's long gone. Yeah, I, I trained with him. Aaron for years, and he, he you know he had a phenomenal physique. I mean, anybody who can shake their arm and their tricep flaps. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was just uh, it was just pretty amazing. When you stand next to somebody like that, and you make an honest assessment about whether or not you're at that level. Right. You know, it's clear I wasn't, and that's kind of another one of the reasons why in '97 I, I thought that uh, you know that's just a whole whole new level. Uh, fortunately for the Masters, I was able to bring in a lot more size and a lot better definition and, uh, and get that pro card. And I still think that, that I'm making improvements. So I still think that moving forward that, that I can, uh, I can uh, do some uh, place decently in, in these shows. Uh, I, don't, I don't see myself being on the, you know, the Olympia stage, but I'm, I'm almost 43. And uh, you know, I lack some of the gifts that the, those guys uh, have, those small waists and those uh, you know, sweeps and things like that. I just have thick, dense power lifter muscle. It's hard from 25 years of, of heavy training. Uh, and I can bring that to stage and bring it in a good condition, then, then I can certainly win uh, some placings mm -hmm. here and there. It was an unbelievable experience. You know, I was standing up there, of course, I didn't get called out for the first call out, and I didn't get called out for the second call out. But I couldn't be discouraged because I'm standing there watching Tony Freeman, Hidetata Yamagichi, and, and, and Troy Alves, uh, uh, and uh, Melvin Anthony, you know, they're standing right in front of me. I'm 10 feet away, and, and these guys are, you know, going through seven rounds of mandatories, uh, you know, for this show. Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a great experience to see so that. For real, just watching it. Yeah, like that. and, and, and the, the amount of energy and, and hard work they put into it, I mean, it was just, it was motivating for me to stand there and watch them. I mean, they were just blood and guts. Those guys were up there fighting it out for seven straight rounds. It was, it was pretty inspiring. So you got the two pro shows coming up. What months? <clears throat> I just did the Phoenix. I'm going to do the Orlando Pro. And it's that's in when? three weeks. Three weeks. That's uh, April 16th and 17th down in Orlando. Uh, that's and then, Emerald Cup weekend. So you I know I'm going to miss that this year. I was disappointed. <laughs> I really was disappointed. My folks live about an hour and a half from Orlando, so they get to come watch and, oh, and see me cool. uh, see me compete first time as a pro, uh, and that's exciting. But then I'm right back into powerlifting. Right back. Yeah, into power. That's my bread and butter. That's what I love to do. I, I love to train heavy, and so I'll go right back into powerlifting. I'll try and do a three lift meet in the powerlifting world uh, sometime a couple months before the Olympia. You're going after that raw total. You want, the, you want that John Cole? Is it John Cole? Yeah, John Cole, but I don't know if I can diet down to 275 again. I intentionally dieted oh. down under 275 because that's the weight class that Johnny and Ben compete in. Right. And I didn't want there to be anybody squawking about the fact that I went and lifted bigger weights because I was 300 pounds. Right. So I dieted down to 275 when I hit that 2221 total. That's the current highest raw total in the world in any weight class in any federation. So irrespective of, of, of what federation you're lifting in, and, and doesn't matter what you weigh, nobody that currently competes has, has lifted over 2,221 pounds. But it was 29 pounds short of that 1971 John Cole all-time world record of 2,250. And I, I might miss out on chasing that again because now that I'm bodybuilding as well, I don't want to keep dieting all the time. I want to be able to add mass. Right in the off season still, because I'm still able to, to put on size. I can get up to 290 plus. Uh, I, I need to do that and not stay under 275 all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm probably gonna go into the 308 class, power lift uh, in the 308 class and see what kind of records I can chase there. And then, uh, and then go to the Olympia. That's, that's really what I'm excited about, to go down there and, uh, and do that uh, bench dead competition at the Mr. Olympia. Just benched in, benched and dead. And is, uh, is Jack, uh, Ben White, is he doing it ben again? Ben says also? he's in it. Yeah, I saw him oh. at the Arnold Classic. He's so. excited. He got his deadlift up. I think he pulled a 700 recently. Oh. And if uh, Ben can get his deadlift up to 750, I know he can bench a six. That'd be a, that'd be a uh, you know, a 1350 total. Uh, Johnny only got 1338. Oh. At so the we Olympia. get heated up a little bit. Yes, yeah, so those two are getting closer. Uh, yeah, another 100 pounds and they'll be able to catch up with me. <laughs> if you're listening, Ben White, <laughs> Jackson, <laughs> there's a the man right here. They already know. I mean, yeah, I, I've had no shortage of things to say about that. They already know. It's fun for me, but uh, uh, when we get up there, it'll be serious business. We'll definitely be doing everything we can to, to, to beat each other. All right. Yeah. Well, great. I just want to wish you the best of luck. Yeah. And thanks for letting me interview thanks. you. And uh, Stan Efferding, Tony Ruggiero for uh, Mark Mason Media and Backstage Pass. <laughs>